but but Don, it would be remiss if we had had you here and didn't ask about, you know, obviously what's going on in the world right now with coronavirus that has become the biggest news story um, internationally, and it has affected many different leagues, different sports. I know that MLS has been working with a task force with other with the CDC right. and other leagues. Where are you guys with this right now? Well, you know, it's very real time. Uh, and th the best thing that I could say is we, like all businesses, are trying to be on top of it and as front of it as we possibly can be, knowing that what decisions we make today could be changed tomorrow. I literally came here from a task force meeting in our office and left the conference room to walk across Re town to really see you. Really glad that I interrupted that, that? meeting. <laughs> <laughs> the meeting ended when I left. Okay. No. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, listen, this is uh, uh, concerning, uh, to be fair. Uh, new ground. Uh, we talked about, you know, a number of different things, Julie, that I think would be interesting. Uh, Todd Durbin, who you've met, runs our competition group, said, you know, this, this sort of is a little bit like how we were together as a group after 9-11 which happened in such real time and forced us to come together as a league, uh, organize thought and strategy and policy out of the league office, understanding that we had many, many other constituents from our employees to our players to all of our teams to the stadiums, some of which then that we owned, some that we were tenants in. And you've, you've got to have the right people in place that are dealing with the issues that, uh, that require lots of, of, of thought. So we have a medical group, we have a security group. Uh, Joanne Neal, who's the president of the league, who oversees administration and HR and lots of other things strategically, uh, is engaged with uh, leading this group so that we know and can come together every single day on decisions we have to make. How are we going to manage the international releases and the, right. uh, the FIFA date at the end of the month? We have lots of people that are traveling every day and traveling internationally and domestically. Are we going to continue to allow that to happen? Uh, how are we going to manage uh, the GA Cup where we're bringing in a bunch of international teams? Uh, how do we manage our own uh, experiences with um, uh, how we deal in New York, which might be different than dealing in other markets. And the one thing that I have to say today is that if this was something that would be airing a month from now, I think the answers as to what we do will be very different mm -hmm. because it's developing. Uh, the CDC, the, the, the Center for Disease Control, is communicating effectively as is the, a task force in the White House. And all of us know that this is not going to be federally driven. It's going to be locally driven right. and the local news is developing as we speak. Right. And so because, you know, many leagues and many places have taken their cues from CDC and from the federal government, because that is what we the information we're getting. You do mention that it's at moving at such a rapid pace that we're learning hour by hour. How much of um, an onus or responsibility as a league, as MLS, do you guys take even specifically, you know, we need to be concerned about our players, our our teams, our fans, regardless of what CDC says? You know, it's, that's a good question, Julie. We, we, we talked about that. I mean, the best thing that we could do is ensure that we are getting the best possible timely information in real time so that we could make decisions that are in the best interest of all of our constituents, fans, uh, employees, players, et cetera. Uh, and we as a league, and I'm no different than the other sports leagues, uh, have to get that information. You can't get it from the news. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to get it as and uh, from uh, the, the authorities, if you will, that are dealing with this on a day-to-day -day basis. But we're recognizing that it's changing as we mm -hmm. speak. Yeah. Uh, and we will make the right decisions for all of our constituents, regardless as to where the government, if you will, is coming in. But listen, if the government decides that uh, they're going to limit public assembly, then we're going to have to adjust to that. And that's what's been happening in a handful of, uh, of cities throughout right. Europe. That's just an example. Yeah. Um, Don, you are... We went from sort of the fun and talking about Batman That's what to we do on uh, Trains of Things. Yeah. We're all over the place <laughs> as, as, as that's what life is. But Don, um, you know, you're a commissioner, but you're also, you know, you're, you're a human. And when you, what keeps you up at night when, when something like this is directly 
potentially going to affect your league? You know, it, it starts with uh, it not being able to, it starts with the unknown. You know, we, all of us are citizens of the planet, right? There are a lot of things we don't have control over and a lot of things that we don't know that are going to affect our daily lives. You know, I had lunch with my daughter who's just coming back from maternity leave and has a three-month-old baby, you know, and you start thinking about how does all mm -hmm. this affect, you know, your family. But at the end of the day, Julie, it is, how does it affect all of us? And I think that there are business concerns and then there's humanity concerns and then there are overall sort of the impact on our life concerns. And, you know, I, I know that we'll all get through this. You know, we, I, I'm a student of history. You know, we've gotten through terrible war, wars. We've gotten through terrible conflict and diseases and we've gone through, gone, gotten through terrorist attacks and I can remember during all of that thinking that you know life will never be the same and in some ways they aren't but in many ways they do get normalized mm -hmm. and this will get normalized also yeah I mean I think we're all just hoping you know we're not no one's trying to no one's hoping that this is a big deal everyone wants everyone to be to be safe and to be healthy and for this to to definitely go away and before we go to break I have one quick question in Europe, they've had to deal right. with, you know, closing of or postponing games and having fans not watch the games. What have you taken from what they've gone through and what they've that they've been dealing with, or even if you've even had conversations yeah. with people? What have you taken that you've the, learned? The speed from what in which they acted. I mean, they acted really fast. You know, they closed down their stadiums to to fans in in Italy pretty quickly. They postponed just very recently. Uh, and they acted quickly. So uh, I am hoping that that doesn't happen uh, and praying that that doesn't happen because I think it would, if that's happening, it would probably affect lots and lots of other public events that take place. But boy, they acted pretty quickly.